Hello and welcome to tonight's program. My name is Mary Quo 92CC and I'm currently the co-chair of the Associations and Clubs Committee for the Columbia Alumni Association and I'm excited to welcome you all to this special event for Columbia alumni. As many of you may know, Connects is an annual CAA signature event where we bring alumni together to network, celebrate our strong Columbia connection, and learn about all that our global clubs and identity-based and shared interest groups have to offer. Our more than 100 global clubs and groups are organized to connect alumni to one another by their passions, their interests, and their ongoing engagement with the university. This year, given these unprecedented times, we seek to accomplish these goals with tonight's exciting cooking demonstration, as well as a number of upcoming networking events that will take place in mid-October. Please be on the lookout for a post-event email with more information about these networking opportunities with leaders of our various alumni clubs and groups who work hard to foster a continued relationship with Columbia and one another. At the conclusion of tonight's cooking demonstration, you'll be able to ask questions using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen in Zoom. As you cook along, we encourage you to take photos and share, share them with other Columbia alumni on social media using hashtags Columbia Alumni and Columbia Connects. And now I would like to introduce our stellar presenters for tonight's program. Alumna Manal Kahi 2015 SIPA is the co-founder and CEO of Eat Offbeat, a refugee driven food company that delivers authentic meals conceived and prepared by refugees who now call New York City home. Manal moved to New York City to pursue a career in environmental affairs but the hummus she found on supermarket shelves led her on a different journey. She co-founded Eat Offbeat to help New Yorkers discover authentic cuisines from around the world, all the while creating quality job opportunities. Eat Offbeat has since served over 250,000 meals in New York City and has been featured in numerous high profile media outlets, including Forbes, The Guardian, The Huffington Post, Newsweek and Fast Company, to name a few. Chef Shantini, or Shanti, as she's known in the kitchen, contributes an overwhelming amount of recipes and flavor to the Eat Offbeat profile. Growing up in Jaffna, Sri Lanka, she served as a chef to her large family and today hundreds of others who crave her authentic curry recipes. With a deep appreciation for the sweet delicacies of coconut, rambutans, and mango steams that she ate fresh growing up, Chef Shantini's recipes represent the multitude of distinct Sri Lankan ingredients Shanti misses from home. She introduces many people to a gastronomy previously unbeknownst to them, and as a result, received lots of rave reviews from customers. I'm now pleased to welcome Manal and Chef Shanti. Hi everyone, Thank, thanks a lot, Mary. Um, Hi everyone, so my name is Manal, as, uh, as uh, Mary already mentioned, I'm the co-founder and CEO here at Seed of Beat. Uh, I am also joined tonight by Sarujan Shiva Kumar, whom you, you, you're, you're also seeing. He'll introduce himself in, in a little bit. Sarujan actually happens to be Chef Shanti's son, uh, and he will be with us throughout this class um, or demonstration, uh, and he will be with us at the, towards the end to answer also any, any questions uh, towards the end. Um, so again, my name is Manal, I co-founded Eat Off Beat in 2015, uh, and as Mary already mentioned, it all started because I was kind of looking for better hummus, or I wanted to bring, I I'm come originally from, from Lebanon, I came to the US, specifically to Columbia University, to the School of International Public Affairs, SIPA, uh, in 2013, uh, and my goal was to study energy and environment. I really wanted to work in, on international climate affairs, but uh, as I mentioned, hummus kind of took me on a different story. Uh, when trying to bring better hummus to New York, we thought with my brother, Wissam, who's also a Columbia alumni, at the, uh, he graduated from the business school, um, we thought to bring better hummus to New York, why not partner with Syrian refugees being resettled back at the time here in the US? Um, and kind of bring, you know, knowing the community, we knew they, they really, they would know, you're right, that there's a high likelihood that they make really good hummus, just like the one we used to have when we were kids. Our grandmother actually was from Aleppo, from Syria. Uh, knowing the community, knowing the culture, we also knew they would be more than happy to share that with 
there are host communities here in the US. So that kind of sparked the idea behind it. Uh, long story short, uh, six years in, today we, we were a catering company up until March. We delivered authentic global meals to uh, events, corporate events, and regular events all over New York City. We've served over 250,000 meals to, to date. Um, but clearly with COVID, we've had to pivot. I'll tell you a bit more about that in just a little bit. Uh, I want to make sure Sarujan gets the chance to introduce himself too. And we, uh, after that, I kind of tell you a bit more about who we are at Itofbi today, what we're doing today, what we plan on doing as we move forward. Um, and obviously then we move on to watch the video of Chef Shanti and myself preparing the Katarika curry. Hopefully everyone who's cooking tonight is, is ready, has prepared all of, all of the ingredients. I know some of you have ordered our ingredient boxes. Um, if you have, hopefully you have all of your ingredients ready. If you haven't, you probably have purchased them elsewhere. If there's a certain ingredient you did not find or you don't have, please feel free to ask us in the Q&A. There are always ways to uh, substitute or maybe um, remove something. One quick thing I will say before Sarujan introduces himself, for anyone who hasn't started prepping we've sent, I know um, uh, there was an email that circulated about an, an hour ago with a short video of how to prep the eggplants. If you had time to do that, great. Uh, if you haven't, now might be a good time while we present or before we start the video, it might be a good time to start preparing the eggplants. You're going to be chopping them into about four inch planks um, and then soaking them with one tablespoon of salt and one teaspoon of turmeric. Uh, if you wanted to, to start doing that, feel free to do that. If not, don't stress too much about it. Obviously, we will cover it again during the video, but I'm just mentioning this for anyone who feels less comfortable at the kitchen and who might feel like the, uh, the demo might go too fast for them. Um, we, we will move on. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to it of bit story. I will tell you a bit more about that, but in the meantime, I want to make sure Sarujan introduces himself. Uh, Sarujan? Thank you, Manal. Hi, guys. I'm Sarujan. Um, as Manal mentioned, I'm um, son of Shanti, um, and I'm also working along with her at Eight Out Beat. I work as a delivery manager at, at the moment. I'm also taking care of the content side of the um, team right now. Um, I've been working here for the past three years now. I also just graduated from um, LaGuardia, majoring in film. So, yeah, that's it. I'll keep it short so you have enough time to watch the video. Perfect. Thank you, Sarujan. One more thing, the, the video we're going to be watching together was entirely filmed and edited by Sarujan right here. Multi-talented. He wears so many hats at the, at the kitchen at Itofit, and I'm so happy that he's joining me today. Obviously, if you have questions about Sri Lanka, about Sarujan, about Katarika, Katarika curry, which we will be preparing, about any other Sri Lankan food, we can ask Sarujan uh, at the end, right after uh, when we finish preparing the, uh, the Katarika curry. Uh, and obviously I will be there too to answer any other questions. During the video, if you have any questions, also please feel free to use the Q&A feature. Uh, both Sarujan and I will be monitoring and we will, be, we will try it to the extent possible to answer all of your questions uh, right now. A couple more minutes, I'm just going to tell you a bit more about Eat Off Beat to give you some more context of the video that's coming up. So like I mentioned, we started it as a catering company back in 2015. And our goal was to uh, bring Off the Beaten Path global cuisines and make that available to everyone in New York City. We did that on, as catering up until COVID hit us in, in March. Clearly with COVID, we lost 100% of our business. All of our catering events got canceled. Um, and we had to pivot overnight if we were to survive, right? It was a very, um, very weird time, I would say. I know Sarujan was there too, witnessing uh, what was happening. Um, within a week, we took our best sellers from catering, repackaged them, repurposed them, put them in a box. Uh, and now we deliver those boxes directly to our consumers or to our customers all over New York City. So basically today we are a food or a meal delivery company. We deliver meal boxes with food from around the world. Usually it's five or six different countries that are represented in, in one box. Um, and those are delivered all over New York City. If you live in New York, we would love for you to try them. 
uh, at the end of, of this session, we will give you a short discount code if you'd like to give those a try. If you're outside of New York, unfortunately, we do not deliver yet. Right now, we're still really focused on New York, but stay tuned. Um, we're trying to grow and hopefully we will, we will get to you sooner rather than later. Uh, you can follow us on social media. Sarujin right here also runs our social media channel, so you would be hearing from him. Interact with us. If you have questions, shoot him a text on Instagram. I know he loves it. I like it too. It's, it's always fun, you know, to hear from you. Um, if you've ordered our ingredient boxes, we would love to hear from you also. We'd love to hear your feedback. It's something that we might be um, iterating with or that we might be testing and piloting in the next few months. So we would love to hear from you. If that was a good experience, we might launch it to the overall uh, community. This way anyone, even those outside of New York could, uh, could get that. We also have a cookbook coming up in March that will include the Katarika curry recipe and so many other recipes by Chef Shanti, by Chef Dia, by all of our chefs. So basically I think there's 12 different chefs are featured in, in that uh, cookbook. That's coming up uh, or that uh, the official publication date will be in March 2021. Um, I do not want to take too long uh, before we, we actually go into the meat of our, of our, uh, of our topic of, or of our demo today. Um, so uh, let's let's get there and if anyone has any questions obviously we'll still be here towards the end in about 30 minutes i think the class will take about 33 to 34 minutes and right after both saruj and i will be right here and we can answer any questions or talk more about either eat off beach sri lanka our kitchen our recipes whatever you would like um thank you so much again for joining tonight it's such a pleasure and i wish we could be there in person maybe maybe next year uh, in the meantime, please enjoy the, 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 the cooking demo and reach out if you have any questions. Hi everyone, my name is Manan. I'm the co-founder and CEO at uh, Eat Off Beat. And I'm very excited today to be joining Chef Shantini for a cooking class um, showcasing her very famous Katarika curry. Uh, before we start, Shanti, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi. My name is Santini and I am from Sri Lanka. I am today I am making um, Katarika, Katrika curry. My language is Katarika and English and the eggplant curry. Um, I am eat a bit three years I am working. Right, so you've been a chef with Eat Up Beat for the past three years. Yeah, I am working. Excellent. <laughs> uh, and for context, Chef Shanti's Katarika curry has been a bestseller uh, on our catering service for the past uh, three years, I, be I believe. So we're very excited to showcase uh, that recipe, and we hope you will you will be able to enjoy it too, wherever wherever you are. Uh, chef Shant Shanti also goes by Shanti, so that's her shorter name, right? <laughs> Uh, but your full name is Shanti. Shantini. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, so here we're, we're going to start. We have most of the ingredients uh, ready for you, and Chef Shanti will showcase exactly how she goes with uh, with all of the ingredients and how it, the whole recipe will, will come together. Uh, if you're at home doing this with us, we'll go step by step. Um, hopefully, we won't go too fast. I know Chef Shanti is way, way faster than myself. I'm, I'm a very moderate home cook. Chef Shanti is, is a professional. So I will be asking you to slow down at, at some, uh, uh, some steps and I will try to translate as much as possible or at least um, uh, give you instructions as, as much as possible and ask uh, Chef Shanti questions so that we really understand how to make the dish. Um, let's let's uh, let's start. Let's get started, Shanti. Whenever you are ready. Okay, it's that. <laughs> First thing you do is you chop the onion. Onion, right? Yes. yes. Perfect. I'm gonna. I'm only going to be watching right now. I'm not. Uh, I'm not helping. But if you need any help, let me know. Uh, all right. So we start by obviously peeling the onion. When I'm at home, I usually like to wash it before I start chopping. I wash it with cold water, right? So it doesn't um, to reduce the tears. Is that something you do? Do you have any tips? Is there anything you do at home so that it doesn't make you cry? Here, I, I think this. Okay. Do you have any tips, chef? What to do so it doesn't give you tears in your eyes or 
She does this a lot, day in and day out, and even here in the kitchen, so I'm sure you've been tolerant to that. I personally at home always wash it with cold water. That's something I've learned from uh, my grandmother back home, and my mother does that. All right, so we're chopping one onion to, be to begin with. So I see you are crying a little bit. <laughs> Rest assured, there's nothing wrong. It's, it's just the onions. So now that uh, Chef Shanti has chopped the whole onion, we have it if, for everyone who's at home, if you want to put it in a separate bowl or put it aside so we can continue. But as you can see, it's a rough chop. It doesn't necessarily to be, it need to be very, very fine because it's going to go in the sauce anyway, right? All right, so now that the onion is ready, what's next? Aesthetic garlic. Next is the garlic, and I see you have one, two, three, four, five, six, around six cloves of garlic. Yeah. Do you usually use this much more or less, or is that? Yeah, more I am. Sometimes you use sometimes more than more, that. Yeah. So if you like garlic, feel free to, to throw in more. I know Shanti can put sometimes up to 10, yeah. right, if yeah, you're at 10, home. Yeah. If you don't like garlic, you can also skip, have a little less, but this would be kind of a middle ground. Yeah. Go ahead if you want to start. Chopping. I personally love garlic, so I usually yeah, go I for, like, go I for, like for more garlic. For more, you like more yeah. garlic. So usually, if, if you were making this at home, would you put maybe 10 piece, 10 cloves? Yeah, 10 or? more. 10 more than 10? Like for this? Yeah. 10 to 15. Yeah, I like the like garlic. So garlic good. Perfect. Garlic is good. You use garlic in almost everything. Right? Everything, yeah. In Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka, yeah. yeah. Only ginger and chicken and lamb and fish. Ginger corn, yeah. Ginger, ginger and garlic, yeah. Yeah, ginger and garlic. Yeah, vegetables, don't put uh, ginger. Oh, wow, yeah. that's interesting. So, Chef Shanti mentioned, just mentioned, so garlic, you use it in all curries. Yeah. For oh, chicken, yeah. beef, lamb, yeah. and fish, this you also use ginger. Ginger, yeah. Right? But for vegetables, we skip the ginger. It's just the garlic. Garlic. Right? So I see she's finally chopping the garlic. And when you're done, we can put it here. Perfect. So next, after the garlic, for everyone who's uh, chopping at home, if you want to also put it aside, can they mix it with the onion or should it be separate? Separate. For you? separate. separate. So do not mix it yet with the onions. Put it in a separate ramekin or maybe a small bowl. And next you this will start with... And chili. Chili. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so now that we have the onions are chopped, the garlic are, is chopped, we go, we, we will start with the... Um, chili. Chili. Thai chili? Is that what you call yeah. them? Hard chili. Yeah. Hard chili. We've sent you for those who got... The, okay, perfect. Um, Shanti, you were telling me earlier that these in Sri Lanka, you yeah. would find these anywhere, right? At any grocery store, yeah. any deli, like that's something that's readily available anywhere you go. Uh, where do you get it here in the US? Sorry. <laughs> this one? And um, my country, my country have every place. Everywhere. And uh, here, this America, only Indian market and Sri Lanka market only have this one. Got it. So the easiest place, if you're looking for uh, the uh, this chili, the easiest place to find it is any Indian store. If there's one close to you, any obviously any London store would have them. Um, but otherwise, Indian stores, Indian grocery stores would have them. Great. So they're chopped. So I can see you've done small slices first, probably half an inch slice to begin with, and then you've given it another rough chop. So if you wanna put them here. And how many did you chop? Four? Four. Four pieces. So she's chopped four pieces so far. Brilliant. You have to be careful now not to touch your uh, yes, your yes. eye, right? <laughs> very careful. I've yeah, done that very, once. Very spicy now. And this we will dispose of right here. It's very spicy. I can, I can already smell it, actually. I can <laughs> even uh, through my mask. So definitely make sure to either wash your hands or don't touch uh, your uh, yeah. So next and, is? And this one, curry mm, leaves. Curry leaves. Yeah. That again, I can also smell it. If, if you have it at home, I hope you can uh, you can already smell it. So uh, where, where do you buy this, Shanti? This one, 
uh, Indian market and my country is Sri Lanka market have this one. Perfect. Every place, no, this one only. only it's market, hard to market. find. Yeah. We know, we are a little bit like we sometimes struggle also to source it, but it's definitely available in any Indian or Sri Lanka stores. Lanka, yeah. If you'd like to start chopping, how many leaves will you chop for this recipe? And uh, here have 10. 10 leaves? Yeah, 10. It's smaller leaves if, yeah. if you want to start. Ten, so ten have I want you more. So sometimes you yeah, can put yeah, more. Yeah. So for this recipe, we're chopping ten leaves. Um, if you want more, obviously you can use more. Yeah. This hair very nice. We are coming. Right. Yeah. So Chef <laughs> Shanti was mentioning this to me even earlier. Apparently, curry leaves are very good for your hair. It is believed that it makes it grow faster, yeah. right, and thicker. Yeah. And you see, this is, yes. you probably eat a lot of that. Yeah, lot you can of. see that in yes. your very healthy hair. Right. Perfect. So she put the, the leaves, she stacked them on top of each other, and she's chopping them in rel relatively thin pieces. The end, so you see, it's going to look like. All right, so again, we're going to put yeah. them aside. another chop yeah, no, and next is the tomatoes right Tomato, yes. that's the last thing to chop so you have two tomatoes set aside they are small to medium tomatoes or you could if you have a very big one you could also use that so the tomatoes we're going to give them a, also a rough yeah. uh, chop they don't necessarily need to be very finely chopped just make one for now, it's okay? Yeah. We have some ready on the side, but still, uh, Sh Chef Shanti is going to chop one just so you get exactly how, how big it would be. So while you're chopping, I'm showing you more or less the size. Perfect. This is enough. Perfect. So we'll give you a couple minutes to chop the rest of the tomatoes. Everything now ready. Now I am start cooking. Perfect. Now we will start cooking. Maybe before we do that, just so everyone at home also gets all of the other ingredients ready. What else should everyone prepare on the side? So probably one full can of chickpeas. Yeah. Um, I I may take this one. One and a half. One and a half cups. Yeah, one, one and a half cup. So maybe the next step for everyone, if you can get one and a half cups of, uh, of chickpeas, it can be from a can. Uh, obviously, you need to drain it if it's from a can. We'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Uh, you were also mentioning, Shanti, that if it's better for you, you like it better if you make it fresh, right? Fresh so you get food, yeah, fresh. And night, put water. You soak it in water yeah, overnight. Water all night and morning. You're cooking the eggplant also. Mm -hmm. Cooking, um, boiling, first time boiling. Right. After, everything curry. Perfect, perfect. So, easy shortcut, and especially now if you're uh, live with us, you can just use a can. It's kind of, it's the second best thing. Obviously, Chef Shanti, when she's at home or here at the kitchen, she boils them fresh, so you can buy mm -hmm. them. Um, soak them in water overnight. I know some people also add some baking soda, right, to, make it, soda, yeah. to make it um, faster. And then you can boil them uh, right before you, you start uh, cooking. Um, what's the next step? Should we also prepare the spices or we'll use the spices later? Later. 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 Okay. So next and steps now that we've prepared all of the chopped ingredients, we have the chickpeas ready. The next steps is the egg. Yes, yes. plant them right. Perfect. Yeah. So for everyone at home, now we're going to see a cut. Uh, Shanti has already fried the, right. the eggplants. For everyone at home who's frying right now, now is the time to maybe start by chopping uh, the eggplants. As you can see, Ch Shanti has chopped the eggplants. You used how many eggplants was that? Two? Yeah, two eggplants. Two eggplants, medium size yeah. probably, and you're going to chop them in? No planks that are probably four inches long, three to four inches long, and one inch thick. So we're cutting them in, in small planks, and then you will deep fry them.
that the uh, eggplants are fried, we're gonna move to make, to prepare the sauce. Go ahead, Shanti. What, what were you? So we're using a medium-sized yeah, medium. pot. Yeah. At home, they can use a smaller small one. Small time, okay, yeah. It's small eggplant and small one. Okay, perfect. And I take oil. Vegetable oil? Vegetable oil. You're gonna put just a little bit, yeah. right? So that it doesn't yeah, This one oil there. Because this already has oil, but she's using probably one tablespoon yeah. in the pot just to uh, to be able to fry everything and put everything all together. I'm gonna heat up the oil. So what will you start with? Uh, I am the onion. Perfect. Yeah. We're gonna start heat. by frying the onions. Once yeah. the, hot, the, the oil is hot, we're going to first be adding the onions. What What's next after the onions? After I put onion and tomato. Tomatoes goes next. Yeah. And garlic. And then the garlic. And onion. And chili. The chili. chili. And tomatoes. And salt. Salt. Perfect. So if you're at home waiting for the oil to heat up, Make sure you have handy the onions, the garlic that will go right after, the tomatoes, the chopped chili, and some salt. And as soon as the oil is hot, we're gonna go ahead and add it. No. She wasn't very happy with how hot the oil is. She wants it to be uh, hotter. <laughs> we'll trust that you at home will let it be very, very hot. Unfortunately, we're using electrical uh, it's, it's not as good. Shanti's yeah. not very happy with it, but it, it will do for the sake of this uh, of this video. So you you let the onions fry yeah. until they're brown. Yeah, little brown. Perfect. We're stirring. Let's go. No salt yet. You add the salt later. Salt will come after. Perfect. So next, now once they're translucent, you add the garlic. We will wait until it's translucent. Uh, another thing you were mentioning also is that sometimes at home you also make it a bit spicier, right? So for people who like spicier levels, what do you add to make it even spicier? More chili, maybe? More chili. More chili, probably instead of using four, in this recipe we're putting four. Yeah, they are ten. 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 So at home, Shanti, for, if she's making it for herself, she would probably put nine or ten uh, pieces of, uh, of chili to make it very spicy. Anything else that you put more of? Yeah, the fun chili, with more chili. And more of the chili. So yeah, you can also use more if you like it spicy. Another thing, if it's too spicy, we're also not using that right now in this recipe, but if it's too spicy for you, you can also add some coconut milk. Right? Uh, how much? A can? Yeah, one, one, like one. Yeah. So one can one of coconut can. milk one, one, should be one enough. Cup. Okay. Or one cup, depending on how that's more kind of. Yeah. But at least one cup to a maximum of uh, one can of coconut milk. Perfect. We're giving you some time just to make sure that the uh, onions are translucent. Hopefully you have better conditions at home, a better, <laughs> a better pan, better heat. Uh, we are, for context, just so know, this is our office space, actually. We're using it that has better lighting than our kitchen downstairs. This is right upstairs from, from our kitchen. Uh, it's also a little loud in a commercial kitchen. Um, so we, we wanted to be here so you can hear us properly. And unfortunately, with, with COVID, with the pandemic, we both have to be wearing our masks. So we, we were a little worried about uh, noise levels. All right, this is starting to look good. So now once they add, right after this, they're going to be adding the garlic, tomatoes, garlic. 
for the food. Next, once it's a little brown, or at least transition before it gets very brownish. So I'm looking at the onion right now, it's already fragrant, and it's looking like uh, translucent. We've added the garlic for just less than a minute, probably, just for them to give it some fragrance. And next, we the chili. So the four pieces of chili that we've had that's going directly in, like I mentioned earlier, if you like it spicier, you can also add uh, some. There's a lot of debate here at the kitchen with, with spice levels. I know Shanti really likes it, other chefs actually don't like spicy don't food, like. so we end up going with for the middle ground, and I know that Shanti at the end always has her own uh, spice. That she no, more spicy. Yeah. Does Sanushin like it spicy? Or? No, no, no. So her son also doesn't like it too spicy, so <laughs> there are always. Uh, if you at home also have you know different people who, uh, you know, and different uh, levels of spiciness preferences, um, what type, what do you, uh, what can we add at the end if people like spicy? What do you recommend that they can add? Maybe chili. chili, chili can be chili good. Can they add it at the very end yeah. after? Yeah. So you can always add some chili if you like spicy. Can the chili press chili? The five five people like. Right. <laughs> so in Sri Lanka, they have the fresh chili. Yeah. Fresh chili. Yeah. And that's why they love it so much. It's probably way way better than what we get here. Yeah. We'll have to settle for what we have. Here. I am buying here this like this only. Yeah. And I can be spicy. Well, Chili more first making, right. after frying, after putting the dish in, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. and kiyomi and this one, everything mixing. Right. Yeah. That's another recipe for a, for a different day. So hopefully we'll have another, <laughs> another session. As soon as it's brown, I can see it's starting to get brown. Yeah, a little brown. Okay. So now that it's a little brown, we're going to be adding the tomatoes on high heat, right? We're still on high heat right now, because we want it to cook quickly. Let's put the salt, salt to cook, and the tomato. Very uh, tomato. Perfect. As soon as we've added the tomatoes, we're adding and salt. one teaspoon of salt. Obviously, that's also to taste, so if you like it saltier, you can add a little bit more after, but one, one teaspoon is probably enough at this stage. We're shaking, and the salt will help the tomatoes become more tender. Yeah. Is it hot? Do you this? Yeah. And after? It's still on high heat. Yeah, high still heat on high heat. Tomatoes and salt to put and close. Close. Tomatoes and water same coming. So now that we've added everything, we're closing on high heat, yeah, high. and we're going to wait a little bit for the tomatoes to kind of uh, throw their juices. Yeah. More or less five minutes? Five minutes, maybe see open. Okay. We're going to wait about five minutes, but we'll also check, peek in, and, and see. So what are we looking for? When do you know that it's ready? Yeah, five minutes after I see now. Okay. Yeah. In five minutes, we, we will take yeah. a look. But what will happen? Will it become... Perfect. So we will keep it on high heat until the, the tomatoes have lost all of their, yeah, yeah. their juices, basically. Perfect. In the meantime, is there anything else you would like to tell everyone? <laughs> now that we're waiting, or maybe we can start preparing now that everyone is waiting. What's the next step? What are we doing next as a little tomato paste? Normal chili. It's not not chili. Normal. No spicy. No. Okay. The, and cumin. Cumin. So chili, cumin. Cumin and black pepper. Black pepper. And turmeric. And turmeric. And garlic. The, uh, the curry leaves. Curry. The chopped curry leaves. Yes. So in the meantime, if you want to make sure to prepare all of the spices, the chili. The cumin, yeah. cumin, turmeric, uh, black pepper, and the chopped curry leaves. Mm -hmm. So start getting that ready because we're going to be using that next. And the tomato paste. Obviously, you can pick any brand. 
so what are we doing with the tomato paste? You will also need about two cups of water, cold. Yeah, cold. Cold water. Cold. So if you can get a small. Uh, more than hot water, not hot. Okay, it doesn't matter. It can be hot, it can be cold. You don't necessarily need to heat it up. But if you can get a bowl with uh, one to two cups of, uh, of water, are we opening this or not yet? We're going to open the tomato paste now. Two tablespoons, yeah. two teaspoons, yeah. one to two teaspoons. Now we're checking on the tomatoes. Uh, make sure you, you mix them a little bit, to make sure it doesn't nothing burn. So they've started releasing some of the juice. Do you think that's enough or we need some more? But it, it's not enough yet. So at home, I mean, double check if it's already kind of, you feel like it's ready, it's, it's given up most of this. It's starting to get dry, that's when you need to uh, stop and start mixing. If, if, if it is the case, maybe turn the heat down a little bit so, so we catch up. Uh, if it's still a little dry, let's leave it for another couple minutes. So now you see, it looks like the tomatoes have kind of given up all of the, the, the water. And I see Shanti is kind of squishing it a little bit, right? To make sure they are ready and kind of tender. Mm, it smells so good. I hope everyone at home is also can, can also smell this. That's, almost, that's how it smells every time I come to visit the chefs at, at the kitchen. It's, it's always very fragrant. There's a lot of different smells, uh, smells coming uh, from everywhere. So now is when we're adding one, one, one to two teaspoons of tomato paste. It's a thick tomato paste. We're mixing that. No need to add salt again, right? No need to add because we've added the salt to the tomatoes. It smells so good right now. <laughs> what, what were you going to say? Chili. Spicy chili. Perfect. Chili goes next. All of it. So all of the spices you've prepared will go now one after the other. The order doesn't really matter. Cumin, the turmeric, which gives it the yellow shade, right? We're mixing everything very well together. And all of this, we're still on high heat. Right? So it looks like now we're ready for the curry leaves? Yeah. Good, I'm, I'm reminding you of <laughs> Perfect, the curry leaves are in. And it looks like all of our spices are already in the pot. We're mixing a little bit more. Does this remind you, does the smell remind you of the Yes. It does, right? Yeah. That's how. And put water. Great. Two cups of water. Is that? Still on high heat. We're mixing really well. This is where also I know Chef Shanti does a lot of kind of eyeballing to see how do you know that it's enough water? Water? One then. One eggplant, how many have? And water. Understand. That. Perfect. So more or less visually you're gonna need, you know, you put as much water as you need to kind of cover up all of the eggplants that, that you have ready. So if you think you don't have if you have you've only prepared maybe one eggplant, maybe use a little less. Uh, water, if you feel like that's not enough to cover everything, yeah. you can cover it, and then you can use you can this. So now again, we're going to cover it, turn it, keep it at high heat, yeah, high heat yeah. uh, and wait for it uh, for a little bit until it boils. Boil, yeah. We'll give you a couple minutes. And of course, in the meantime, we're going to enjoy the smell. Yes. So for the next step, as soon as it boils, just make sure to get the sugar ready so that we add that and the very last step will be mixing in the eggplants the fried eggplants and the chickpeas and then we'll be done um, let's do that actually i know it hasn't boiled yet <laughs> at home please wait until this boils but we want to make sure you know we're running on time with our uh, programming 
it hasn't boiled yet, but it actually, it just is. So we are there, we're all, we're on track. We're going to mix it a little bit before we add all of the remaining ingredients. I'm very hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is hard to... Yeah, I put in the sugar, okay? How much sugar are you going to put? This one, uh, two spoons. Two spoons. So two, two, two teaspoons of sugar. Again, like we mentioned, this is optional. You can skip it. I personally highly recommend it. It's, it's how I like it. Uh, Shanti, when you make it at home, you skip the sugar, right? You do not much more sugar. How does Sarujan prefer it? Prefer it with sugar or without? No, I put light, uh, light You put a bit more light. I don't know yet. Sorry. <laughs> Perfect. So now that we've added the sugar, we've mixed it a little bit. We are going to add the eggplant. 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 So all of the fried eggplant. 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 And last step is the chickpeas. That goes in. Brilliant. Makes and eggplant have so salt. That's why I don't put it. You right. want? You want eggplant? Tasty? No salt. No salt. So you put. Great. So the eggplants that we fried earlier already had salt. That's why we're not adding any salt now to the uh, to the final uh, uh, result. But if you like it saltier, you can also add a little bit of salt. Right now, it's more to to um, to taste. But just keep in mind that the eggplants already have salt, so avoid adding more before you actually at least taste it to see what it's like. And now. Close. To cover again, wait a couple minutes until it's ready, and then we will plate it, right? Yeah. yeah. Really? Come. So now that we've let it boil for a few minutes, it's probably time to serve. You can use a, any any plate, obviously. And one more thing, actually, that Chanti was telling me on the side. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Keep, keep going. Um, if you like it, so depending on your preference, if you like it to be more saucy, uh, you can also add a little bit more uh, water, right? Mix it and kind of let it boil a little bit. Uh, this is how Chef Shanti likes it. She doesn't like it to be very, very saucy. I personally like the sauce, so if you want to dip uh, bread in it or maybe dip more of the rice, then that would be good. Uh, Chef Shanti recommends serving it with rice, white rice, basmati. Yeah, basmati. What's your basmati rice is Chef Shanti's uh, preference. If you don't have basmati rice, want to use jasmine instead, is that okay? Yeah. Any rice, any white rice basically would be, be good, but basmati is preferred. And finally, we will garnish with a little bit of chopped cilantro and some cherry tomatoes, a couple pieces of cherry tomatoes. And it looks like we are ready. Ready. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Good job. Do you, wanna, do you wanna hold it and just carry it so people see? Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We hope you enjoy lunch or dinner today. And Thank you so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Okay, bye. bye. Hi again everyone, we hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope it didn't go too fast. I know I for one, I can never follow as quickly as, as Shanti goes. I was trying while we do, were doing the demo, sometimes I was trying to kind of ask her to go a little slower. I hope that helped. Uh, I want to thank Sarujan again for shooting and editing the video. I hope you, you enjoyed that. Um, we are ready to answer questions. If anyone has any questions and we'd like to, uh, you know, you, you can either ask us in the Q&A or... Uh, 
directly here. We're happy to answer anything about the recipe. I know there were a lot of questions actually maybe since, since we're there. Um, we did get a lot of questions regarding if we can, so how to, so what to substitute the curry leaves with. Um, bay leaves can be a good substitute. They don't have the same flavor profile, but that could be a good uh, second guess if you really cannot find curry leaves. Ideally, curry leaves, you can find them at any Indian store. I know we usually shop at Patel. I know Patel Brothers is available in several cities, so that could be a good alternative. Um, but otherwise, if you use bay leaves, just make sure to remove them. Another question about uh, fresh, fresh chilies. They're called the Thai chilies. I know they were not in that recipe, so you can actually also remove them. They just add a bit more spiciness if you like it to be more spicy. Thai chili are usually smaller. You've seen them in the video. You can also find them at any uh, Indian or Sri Lankan store. That's usually where, uh, where we buy them. Um, someone... Uh, Rama Reddy asked if uh, that she would love to order food from Eat Off Beat. Uh, you can order it directly on our website at eatoffbeat.com. Unfortunately, today we only deliver in New York City. So if you're in the five boroughs, we would love to send food to you. If not, stay tuned, follow us on social media or subscribe to our newsletter. We are hoping to be able to go uh, beyond New York very soon. So stay tuned and hopefully we'll, we'll let you know uh, soon. Uh, Polly just mentioned that you can actually Oh, she's asking if you can grow curry here. I would have no idea. Sarujan, would, would you know? What was the question again? Sorry. You know if you can grow curry here in the US? Grow curry? Yeah. Mm, yeah, but I think you need to grab seeds from uh, like the specific store. Like it has right. to be like, from Sri Lanka or like India. Right. So that, that, it's a tough question. We, we wouldn't know how to answer, unfortunately. Uh, but that's a good question. We will look it up and see if, if that's something that that's possible, uh, Polly. Um, I know Dina also just asked that you can substitute uh, curry leaves for, uh, you can substitute lime zest and basil for curry leaves. Is that recommended? Again, Sarujin, what do you think? Would your mother approve of that? I don't think my mom is going to leave out curry leaf at any point. I don't think she will choose anything but that. So Chef Shanti would really only go with curry leaves. Yeah. If you really cannot find it, um, maybe get one of our ingredient boxes. <laughs> we, we will include the, you know, we will include that. Hopefully soon enough, you will be able to order those up uh, from, from our website, any Indian store otherwise. If you really can't find that, I would go first with bay leaves as a second uh, lime zest or, uh, or, uh, or basil. But usually really the curry leaves is the only thing that will give it the right flavor. Uh, the other thing you may have noticed that in the video, but uh, uh, Shanti speaks very highly of curry leaves and apparently it gives you really good hair and it makes you smile. So if you're looking for a better smile or better hair, <laughs> you might wanna try to find an Indian store nearby. Um, Alyssa just mentioned that she loved the curry. We're really glad to hear that. Uh, what are some other popular eat off beet dishes? That's a great question. Sarujan is at the kitchen all the time. And I know that Sarujan, back when we did catering, he delivered a lot of our uh, orders, or at least he was in touch with a lot of our customers. Sarujan, is there any uh, other recipes that you can think of aside from the curry, the Katarika curry? Uh, from my mom or just in general? Maybe both. Start with your mom and I can talk about others. I think the other one would be dal by my mom, which is lentil. Um, that was very um, popular and it was like it was in every single order before. Because it has coconut milk. Too. Coconut milk and it's very, it's yellow and it's very colorful. I know a lot of people like the uh, chicken fesenjan, which is an Iranian dish by Chef Nasreen. It's also, it has pomegranate molasses, which makes it very, very different. That was one, another one of the favorites. I know Chef Bashir's uh, chicken karahi, mm -hmm. also very famous, very uh, popular. Um, one of my favorite dishes, I wouldn't, <laughs> you know, it's one of my favorite desserts, at least, is the Tres Leches by Chef uh, Lebjolet from Venezuela. I know both Sarujan and I really love that, <laughs> that dish. We usually fight over who gets the leftovers. Um, that's another one of, of our best sellers right now. Uh, we have another question by Salma, who is also a SIPA grad. <laughs> Hi, Salma. I followed your journey for the last couple of years and supported the Kickstarter. Can you talk about the process of publishing the book? Was it hard to find a publisher? 
that was probably one of the hardest things we've done. And Sarujan, I, I see you, you're looking behind yeah. me because all of the books are, there's a bunch of books uh, behind him. The Kickstarter campaign was very easy, actually. Finding a publisher based on when we ran, we ran the Kickstarter campaign back in March 2016. Uh, and it was, uh, I mean, obviously we prepared, we did everything we had to do to, to be ready in time. The problem is finding a publisher was also, relative. we got approached by a couple and it was more a matter of kind of deciding who to go with. What was really complicated, what took way longer than we expected is the actual process of making the book. Because on top of, you know, we had most of our recipes ready. What we did not expect is how stringent the process to go like going through a publisher is they really have to double test every single recipe make adjustments very strict um, procedures on how to write recipes that was one thing but the other thing there are a lot of delays that are not necessarily related to the work itself but more because they have a certain schedule publishing schedule that they have to meet so we had to adapt to that and it ended up taking us three years to actually publish the book instead of it taking just uh, one year happy to chat if you want to email me uh, I can tell you more about uh, Lani ordered the prepared meal and thoroughly enjoyed it. Very glad to hear that. Uh, for the recipe, when you call for chili powder, do you mean the blend chili powder or powdered dried chilies? Um, it's actually the latter. We, we, it's not the chili powder, it's not the chili mix that you use in a, in a chili, it's the dried uh, chiles. So that with, with an E, right, instead of an I. Uh, I know there's a lot of confusion around that, but I hope this uh, clarified it. Uh, Portia, I hope I'm pronouncing the name properly, is asking if this recipe can be used with meat or fish dishes instead of eggplant. Um, Sarujan, can you answer that one? Do you know if, we c if the same curry could be used with meat or fish instead of eggplant? Yes, I actually um, have tried it at home. It's like whenever my mom would cook, I would come in later and mix things up. So it goes well with chicken. Um, my mom would have cooked chicken and it would, uh, basically it's a good blend instead of katerika or eggplant. I mean, instead of eggplant, you can actually blend in a lot of because the sauce itself is a, it's a, it's a different new flavor or new taste, but you can blend in with, I would recommend chicken mostly. Or like, yeah. And I know something uh, Shanti mentioned, whenever she uses, when she makes curries for uh, chicken, anything that's not vegetables, she also adds uh, ginger actually to, to the curry. So that's another tip that I learned from Shanti and during that class actually. Ginger goes in those curries, uh, ginger and, uh, uh, and garlic, but when it's just vegetables, she skips the ginger. Uh, we're gonna take one more question and then we'll need to wrap up. Someone is asking which color lentils does Chef Shanti use? She actually uses yellow split lentils. Um, and very last, Question, does Chef Shanti make the popular Jaffna goat curry? It's reading that question. Sarujan. That, that I, I think it's from Sri Lanka as well. Um, I saw his earlier um, concert. Yes, she does make it. Matter of fact, she actually uh, made it a few weeks back just for lunch at the, at the family meal. And that is my favorite dish from her. She makes, she lo um, she makes it very differently and it's, it's really good. Yeah, she does make the goat curry. Perfect. Uh, family meal, just for, it's an, in it's an internal reference. F family meal is when all of the chefs take a break over lunch and, and have lunch. And every chef prepares something different. It's one of my favorite uh, times of the day, actually. It's a different recipe every day. And I think I missed that one, Sarujan. I did not have the goat. Uh, uh, the oh, goat. you did it. Okay. Next yeah. time, next time. Next time. Next time. Next time. Um, so unfortunately, we have to wrap up. I know it's almost 7 p.m. I hope everyone enjoyed the, the demo today. If you have questions, I'll share this in, in, the, in the chat. You can feel free to email me at manal, that's my first name, at eatoffbeat.com. Uh, otherwise, if you're interested in what happens, what goes on at the kitchen, Sarujan is usually, uh, he posts stories very often and he posts a lot of things on social media. So follow us on Instagram or Facebook. We are at eatoffbeat. So I'm sharing that also in, in the chat. Uh, I, here. Uh, otherwise, please feel free to reach out, like I mentioned, uh, manal at eatoffbeat.com on, on Instagram or Facebook. You would reach Sarujan first. I would also have, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to answer other, uh, any other questions. Um, and that's it. <laughs> we'll also send the discount code actually uh, by email as, as a follow-up to, to this. Or uh, I 
will also share it here in the uh, Colombia 2020 will give you a discount on one of our me boxes if you'd like to try them. That's it for tonight. Uh, Mia, would you like? Oh, there you go. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mia Wright, the Director of Regional Clubs and Alumni Relations. And I'd like to send our deep appreciation and thanks to both Manal and Chef Shanti for taking the time to share an amazing recipe with us and all of those amazing stories. Thank you so much. My kitchen smells wonderful. I hope everyone had a good time as well as I did. Also, I want to thank all of you who joined tonight for our annual tradition to connect and bring alumni together university-wide to celebrate everything that is Columbia. As Mary shared at the beginning of the program, you will be receiving an invitation to attend future networking events in mid-October. They will be hosted by leaders of our global alumni clubs and various shared interest groups. We hope you'll join them in fostering continued relationships with Columbia and building stronger alumni communities both here in the US and around the world. I would also like to remind you that next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, the CAA will be hosting our next Columbia at Home series. This, this week we'll be featuring the Columbia Career Coaches Network. We highly recommend this program for those of you who are interested in learning more about how to make a career transition during these unprecedented times. You can register for next week's event at alumni columbia.edu. Thank you all for joining us and I wish you a pleasant evening and good eating. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>